So you have prepared your presentation. And many of us are rather good at it. We know how to prepare presentations. But if we ask to make a presentation, then we start getting butterflies in the stomach. This unit will focus on how to get over your fear of speaking and taking control. First of all, we must begin with the premise that anxiety is normal. It is not normal for us to speak before a group. So if you are anxious before a presentation, when you are asked to make a presentation, you are not alone. Most people in the world share your fear of speaking before a group. Even professional speakers feel nervous, but they have found ways of dealing with their anxiety. So actually in the real world, we have four kinds of people or three kinds of people. The first category of people are non-speakers. Non-speakers are people who even wild horses will not be able to drag them to the stage. That is the first category, the avoiders. You ask them to make a presentation, they will get a stomach ache, they will fall ill, they will do anything to avoid the presentation. The second category of people is would-be speakers or resistors. People who do not like making presentations, but if they are asked to make okay, as a last resort, they agree to do, but they do not really enjoy it. So they resist making presentations, but do it if in, they have no way of avoiding it. Or they accept that I have to make this presentation. And the third category of person speakers are born speakers. Born speakers are speakers who can hear the applause even before they go up to the stage. They are the seekers. So first of all, you need to find out which category you belong to. Are you a non-speaker, a would-be speaker or a born speaker? And trust me, speakers are not made, born, they are made. Even you can become a speaker if you work hard. It is not a skill, we t tend to think that people are born speakers, but they are not. Now, all of us have the same problem when we are asked to make a presentation, we have to deal with our nerves. And we are going to show you how to deal with your nerves, how to control your body language before you make a presentation. So the first stage is, remember, the first stage is your uh, psychological state. What is your fear? Identify your fear. What precisely is your fear? Most of the problem is not physiological. It manifests itself in physiological symptoms, but the problem is really psychological. You are afraid. Now, I am afraid that I am making this presentation before you and maybe you will give me a very bad feedback. So, I am afraid. I am afraid that my peers are not going to give me, if I am trying to get a deal for my company, I am not going to get that contract. So you have a real fear, what will happen? Now if you are afraid, what happens to you? What happens to you when you are afraid? That is the first thing. And if it happens to you, how likely is it likely to happen to you? And what would you do if it does happen? Let me share my fear. So I am afraid that if I go to make a presentation, in a group of, five, you know, before an audience of 500 people. Sometimes I have to do it if I am asked to do a keynote. I do not really enjoy doing it, but, you know, as a, if, some, if everyone says, no, you have to do it, I agree to do it. But you have 200 people in the hall. What do I do? What happens to me? My heart, go, my heart starts beating fast. The moment I am asked, okay, I am introduced and I am told, okay, you start speaking. My heart starts feel, beating fast. What do I do? I just wait for the thudding to stop, take a deep breath and then I start, go up and smile at people. So what would you do if it does happen? Here we see a lady who is formally dressed and has come for a presentation, but is equally nervous. We find her adjusting her clothes and her hair. She is fidgeting with her hands, avoiding eye contact with the audience. 
swallowing, biting nails, she's shifting weight from one leg to another, she takes deep breath, she's nervous because this is probably her first time that she's making a presentation. Remember, nerves are not a disaster. It's normal to feel nervous. People don't worry so much about nervousness. The audience expects you to be nervous. It's a natural body response that can actually improve your performance. It gives you energy to perform and keeps your mind sharp. Remember, think of sports persons. In sports persons, they feel anxiety. But what do they do with the anxiety? The adrenaline that, they, uh, that flows to them, they, it actually makes them perform better. So nervousness can actually be a good thing for you. Acknowledging your nervousness is not always a sin. And actually, that vulnerability, that uh, uh, acknowledgement of your nervousness can actually be very engaging. So we have this experience of a TED speaker who wrote a book about introverts and spoke at a 2012 conference. She was terrified about giving her talk. But she began by saying uh, that she was nervous and she looked so fragile and um, uh, nervous that everybody wanted to hug her. And this happens to a lot of young people when someone is making a presentation. If you confess to the audience, look, this, uh, this is my first presentation and I'm very nervous. This is the first time I'm ma making a presentation before a big group. Think of Malala making a speech before the UN assembly. And she says she's the first Pashtun girl to be making it. So when people think a 16 year old coming and making it, you want to hug her and you want to protect her. So it's not always a sin to say, acknowledge that you're nervous. Remember, even professionals, people who do it day in and day out, they have pangs of nervousness. Let's now hear a professional. We hear uh, Mr. Angad Singh Atwal, who is a professional model, tell you what happens to him when, what happened to him and how does he deal with his nervousness. That's the difference between ordinary folks like us and professionals, they know how to deal with their nervousness. Hi friends, I'll share you my experience. The time I was nervous and I, it was a big break for me. I started my career and like that was my first ramp ever. I was about to walk on the ramp and I was thinking, what should I do? I thought, like, why shouldn't I sing my favorite song rather than feeling nervous? So as the moment I started on my ramp, I started singing. And it really helped me out. Now let's hear Ashmik Pratik, an amateur actor, share with you how he deals with his fears on stage. Hello, people. Uh, as we know, we are all talking about dealing with our anxieties, right? So everyone gets anxious, and even I used to, when I used to go on the stage or for auditions. And the, my biggest fear or anxiety was to remember those lines, those heavy duty lines that we, used, we had to deliver on screen or on stage. So how I dealt with that was get into the character. I did not, when I got into the character, when I delved into it further, it didn't matter much whether I missed out on one or two heavy words. The point was to get the character across to the people. So that way, with practice, that realizations dawned onto me that once you get into that, you don't have that feeling of anxiousness within you. And you can easily, trans uh, you can easily transpire what is going on to you, to, uh, to your audience. Now, now, acting was something that I used to do. And now I'm into the management field. So now I have to present, give presentations, right? So, and presentations across a very, uh, varied, uh, across a very domain of uh, knowledge. So whether it's marketing or finance or in human resources. What I do, I get into the character. If I'm giving a marketing presentation, I become a marketing person. If I'm, uh, if I'm giving something for the finance, I become a financial, a finance oriented person. And if I'm going, giving something for human resources, I become an HR manager. So that way, I get into the character and give the presentation. So that's it. Let me tell you about the 30 second rule. They say that people form their impression, first impression about you in the very first 30 seconds. 
even before you go up to the stage to speak, people have already made up their minds whether they want to listen to you or don't want to listen to you. And this impression is based largely, mainly on the basis of your visual impression, which includes two things. The first is dress and appearance. For a lady, clothes should fit well, but it shouldn't be tight. The length should be decided upon by what works for you. Generally, longer sleeves are recommended to maintain a more business-like appearance. Colors should be muted like blue and black. Avoid jewelry. Makeup should be simple. Footwear should have decent heel. Hair, like other aspects, should add to a positive overall impression of our appearance. Last but not the least, you must wear only those clothes that you are comfortable in. If you like putting up Indian wear, then you must wear a sari or a salwar kameez. Or break the rules. Depending on your profession, it's important that you dress according to your profession. So if you are a graphic designer, you can bend the rules. Or you are an artist, you can dress different. Uh, hello, ma'am. This is the presentation which we are trying to show today. Uh, actually, we have done the graphic designing as well as made some short films in the current scenarios. And so we would like to present some kind of uh, PPTs and PowerPoint presentations regarding it. Uh, in addition to the regular co-curricular activities and academics that we have done in our course, uh, we have indulged in a bit of uh, graphics and we have also gone and uh, tried to make some short films and ad films in order to assist and make uh, the current scenario with the, with the current places known and also the newspaper content, whatever occurrings are happening. We try to make them scenarizing and uh, we try to make them more clear to our readers and in the magazine, whatever we publish in a college. So these are some of the points which we like to cover. Uh. For men, clothes that are checkered, brightly colored or that that clashes with your image will reflect on with the presentation that you're doing. Depending upon the level of formality, you may wish to button the jacket, unbutton it or take the coat off altogether. Shirt should fit well and color should not be too bright. Ties can be used to complement the color of your eyes and face. Hair frames the face and therefore it should be properly combed. Posture and movement. Stand straight with shoulders back and hands free for using them to gesture. Don't sway or rock while speaking. Don't lean to one side. Don't turn your back towards audience. Walk around to show how comfortable you are. Gestures. Avoid placing hands on hips. Don't cross arms. Don't cross hands in front. Don't clasp your hands behind your back. Don't put hands in your pocket. Starting to speak. Relax your face and neck muscles. Regulate your breathing. Establish eye contact. Occupy your hands. Start your opening ritual. Probably you won't be able to do this in, fr in front of others. Now let's see how the model does it. Mr. Angad Singh Atwal. Many of us have this problem of making eye contact at the initial level. If you are one amongst those, you can probably start your presentation by looking at a fixed point. 
slow down your fear, get onto your nerves and slowly bring your eyes down and make an eye contact with the audience. Gradually, evenly spread your eye contact to each and every person sitting in the room. Smile and begin your presentation. Now let's do everything all together. Thanks for the wait people. We have two eminent people from the HR industry. Let's welcome them and see what they have in store for us. Hi everyone, this is Andit Singh Atwal. Hi everyone, this is Nilinda Kaur. Develop stage presence. You don't have to be someone else, just be yourself. Hi everyone. Hey everyone. Hello everybody. Good morning everyone. Getting the words, story and substance right is a much bigger determinant of success or failure than how you stand or whether you are visibly nervous. We will move on to that in the next session.